what's going on everyone and welcome back to my shop. So this is going to be part three and the final video for my heater install series. Um, if you haven't seen parts one and two, I suggest going and watching those first. But if you remember where we left off in part two, I got on the gas pipe ran, got it under air pressure to check for any leaks um, in my joints or connections. And then the old COVID came to the household, which put everything kind of to a halt. I was unable to get it inspected. And my buddy that's supplying my vent pipe and helping me install it um, wasn't able to come around. So now that that's all over, in today's video, we're going to be uh, installing that four inch vent pipe. I'll be installing this um, Ecobee wireless thermostat. And then I've got my three quarter inch flex line. That will be the last connection from the supply uh, rigid pipe to the unit heater itself. Along with that, I plan on doing a, a review of this heater. Um, how long it runs for, how frequently it turns on, how noisy it is, just my general thoughts of what I think of it. So this, this video might be a, a little bit different format. My buddy came over to help me install this and he showed up and just started jamming out, started moving real quick. So I grabbed my phone and started taking some short videos of what we were doing. And so I'm just gonna show some clips and talk about what we're doing and how we did it. So with that being said, let's get after it. All right, so if you recall in part two, this valve assembly wasn't here. It was just a short chunk of pipe that I, I threaded on and capped off so I could get my air test completed. I wanted to ensure before I moved any further that I didn't have any leaks up in my attic. So I just used that just scrap piece of pipe to kind of get me by and to ensure that I didn't have any leaks up there. So since then I, I got the parts and built this valve assembly. It's just got a shutoff valve, a T, and then below that's what you call a sediment trap. So if you've got any debris in the line, it'll gather in that lower section. So now I'm gonna be installing this three quarter inch flex line that I was talking about. Um, this was kind of hard to find on the weekend. Your, your typical Home Depot or Lowe's only sell the half inch and five eighths, which isn't large enough for the size of heater. So I had to order this three quarter inch um, flex line off Amazon. I'll have the link for this product in my description below. So if you're interested, you can check that out. So the next morning, my buddy showed up with the parts. Um, since I don't have a gas license, I wasn't able to buy this uh, category three vent pipe. So he picked it up for me and brought it over and then helped me install it. He started just going to town. He got this 45 mounted, which will help us determine where we're gonna punch the hole in the wall for the actual vent pipe itself. So just get some measurements and then laying those corresponding measurements out on that back wall. And then it's gonna be a roughly six and a half inch hole. So we used a, a jigsaw to cut that hole out on the inside. There'll be a thimble piece that sandwiches the interior and exterior wall. So the exact um, precision of the hole isn't really that necessary because it'll be covered up. So now we're just drilling some holes along that edge there to kind of give us a reference point to know where to drill the hole in the outside. So there's the inside part of the thimble. And then there's a corresponding one that we'll be cutting another hole for to uh, where they sandwich together. That ensures when your vent pipe passes through the wall, it maintains a, an inch of clearance from any combustible materials. So there's the outside piece going in. As you can see, if your hole's not cut perfect, it doesn't matter because it's covered up by that flange. Just a quick shot through, you can kind of see the not so clean hole, but at the end of the day, no one sees it and it doesn't matter. All right, so since my walls are two by six framed, that thimble piece um, wasn't quite long enough to fully uh, made up so we just cut a sheet metal strip here to lengthen the thimble part so that way there's always constant protection around that pipe or barrier around that pipe and then just screwed it on and we we're on our way. Now that we've got our little extension piece cut and secured to the thimble, we can just mount the thimble pieces to the wall. So secure them with some screws and the inside here. And then here's the outside, just doing the same thing, screw it to the wall. And actually made a nice little cover to kind of make it look a little cleaner on the outside, which you'll see here in a little bit. So yeah, so this is the little um, cover piece that he made. Just pounded a hole through that center, just hand cut um, the inside portion out and then he'll go around and cut the outside. What's, so what's the difference between the Category 3 and the B-Vet? This. Category three is stainless steel, single wall, dissipates the heat better, but it, the difference that they want to use in category three is for condensation so it doesn't rust through. 
So now with the pipe assembled, we'll just slide it through the thimble, kind of roughly line it up with the back of the unit heater. And then we're gonna secure this little uh, cover that he built on there, which I think turned out pretty clean. And then we're just gonna install a 45 at the end of this. And we use some chicken wire and screw that in place to act as a, a rodent protection bird guard so nothing could climb in there and make a little nest. So this pipe's actually sloped slightly towards the outside of my shop. That way any condensate that builds up, it'll just drain out. So now it's just time to connect into that pipe onto the 45 that's on the back of the heater, securing it off, and then we can fire this unit heater off. All right, so that heater fired off perfect. No issues um, with anything. So then I just secured that power cord up to the ceiling. You can see my four inch vent pipe, flex line valve assembly, um, all turned out pretty clean. It was fairly uh, easy to do for a DIY type person. All right, so that install is complete. Um, <clears throat> I passed both my inspections. I had the inspector come out and do that air leak test that I was talking about. No issues there. And then he came out today actually and did the final inspection on it and there were no corrections that needed to be made. Everything was good to go, which I was pretty uh, happy about that. Um, overall difficulty for the install, if you're a typical DIY type person, I feel like this is a, a pretty achievable thing to do if you've got some basic tools and some knowledge. Um, there was a couple spots that were a pain in the butt running that pipe up in the attic and making those connections were just, uh, just not very fun, uh, but it's definitely doable. Uh, one spot that I didn't show was actually me connecting it to my house. I did that myself um, with the guidance of some professional advice. So I didn't film that because I don't do this for a living and I don't feel comfortable showing you how I did it. Um, wouldn't be fair to do. Um, but yeah, overall achievable for the person, typical person to do. Um, and what I think of the heater, it's actually been awesome so far. I've had it installed for roughly, I don't know, about a week and a half. Um, and it does a great job. It's not noisy if you're in here talking to someone or listening to music. It's not overbearing and it's a lot quieter than I expected it to be. Now, when I'm filming, I'm probably going to have to turn it off, talking over the heater and the speaker picking it up. I, I don't want to deal with that. So that's one downside for me. But the typical person where you're not doing that won't be a problem at all. As far as run times and, and lengths, if I'm not in the shop for a couple days and I turn the heater off and let it drop down to let's say 50 degrees and then I want to come out, um, set the thermostat for 68, it'll take probably 25 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes for it to, to fully heat up and be done. And then after that, I'll usually hold the temperature at whatever it's at, let's say 68, it'll drop down to 67 and then it'll run for, I don't know, probably four to five minutes to get it back up to temperature. And then it doesn't, it cycles on and off every 25 minutes or so. But that's kind of dependent on how well my shop or your shop's gonna be insulated. My shop's insulated very well, but I have a weak point being my main garage door. Um, it's not the best sealed door and it's not insulated. So I might correct that down, down the road, um, which would, I think, benefit that a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm overall impressed with this heater. Um, I'd recommend it for anyone looking to do a gas heater in their shop. And I wanna say thanks for watching and please hit that subscribe and like button and I'll catch you on the next one.